The boy groaned as he turned off his alarm clock, then walked to the window. It was still dark out, and the boy could see the moon in the sky. Mm, I can't believe Maya and Julius get up this early every day, he said, rubbing his eyes. But I promised myself that I'd find out what their school is like. I just have to make sure they don't see me. The boy crept towards the door, the lights off to avoid detection. However, misjudging the distance to the door, he walked right into it. The resounding crash brought his uncle running. As he clicked the light on, he saw his nephew lying on the floor, holding his head. What's wrong? he asked. The boy began to sob. I hit my head, he cried. Silly child, his uncle said. Come here. Why don't you join your cousins for breakfast? The boy seated himself at the table while his uncle brought out breakfast. Ta-da, he said, laying the plates out with a flourish. Just like Okasan always makes. In fact, just call me Ka-chan. Just because you're wearing an apron doesn't mean we'll call you Ka-chan, Julia said. You're not our mother. Really? He sighed. I bet your father would be so proud of you if he saw you right now. If I recall correctly, he had a slightly different plan for you. He would have made a way cooler father. His father laughed. Maybe so, he said. But instead, I ended up marrying your mother and starting my own company. The boy looked up at his uncle. What do you do at your company, Stephen Ojichan? He asked. Oh, you know, I meet some people, make some business deals, and head to my company office to, uh, meet people, and, well, uh, work. Nothing too spectacular, he said. Anyways, I have to get to work. You kids be good at school. The boy waited until everyone had left then grabbed his tricycle and followed his cousins, making sure to keep as small as possible to avoid detection. As he walked, the boy found himself distracted by the different buildings. One was a fancy-looking house built atop a hill that he assumed was the Capitol building. Impressed, he stopped to look at it before moving on. Next, he passed by several buildings that were so tall he could barely see the top. Wow, he thought, impressed. I should come here with og Sam later. Not long after that, the boy found himself at the school. Ah, uh, he said, amazed. The boy searched around until he eventually found Maya talking with friends. The boy watched, awed. So this is school. Curious, he found a comfortable spot and sat down to watch. As the day passed, he saw different teachers come and go. He beamed when he saw Maya impress the teacher in her language class. The boy didn't know what language it was, but it sounded impressive. The boy then found himself awed by Julius's graceful flourish as he wrote a sentence on the board. The boy was enjoying watching his cousins, and before he knew it, the bell rang to signal the end of the school day. <gasps> I have to get home quickly before they notice I'm gone, he thought. Nervous, he hopped on his trike and pedaled as quickly as he could, determined to return home before his cousins. Made it, he cried as he rolled up the driveway, then quickly hit his trike and entered the house. He was exhausted by the time he made it inside, but he was the first one back. I should probably pretend I never left, he thought, reaching for some blocks. <laughs> I'm so sneaky. The door creaked open while the boy was congratulating himself, and he heard his cousins enter. Ta-da, ma, Julius said, then noticed his cousin playing on the floor. Playing with blocks again, he asked. <laughs> I wish my life was as easy as yours. Staying at home and playing all day must be nice. Just wait until you have to go to school. <laughs>